Since the fourth Bumiputra Economic Congress recently, many non-Malays have given their opinion regarding that Congress. And understandably, many of them, or almost all of them, have nothing nice to say. It's all negative. And I can understand why they have no positive feedback on the Congress. The first Bumiputra Economic Congress was held in 1965, almost 60 years ago. And 60 years later, we are still talking about the same thing. From the time of my grandfather to the time of my father and until now. And don't forget, I'm also a grandfather now. So we are talking about what? Five generations? From my grandfather to my grandchildren, we are still talking about the same old thing. What is the interpretation of lunacy? Lunacy or madness is doing the same thing over and over again while expecting different results. If for 60 years, we have been trying to do the same thing, talking about the same thing over and over again, and it's proven to not work, it's proven to have failed, maybe it's time to look at something else. Forget about this so-called uh, new economic policy or Bumiputra policy, when he has proven over 60 years until now, he has proven to not work or failed. Now, in 1971, the Dasa Economy Baru or New Economic Policy was launched and it was agreed it was going to run for 20 years until 1990. The Chinese, the Indians, the non-Malays supported the New Economic Policy because they understood and agreed that the Malays uh, have a lot of catching up to do. The Malays are at the bottom of the economic cake. At the time of Odeka, the Malays only owned 1% of the economic wealth. By the time May 13, the Malays are like 2-3% to of the economic cake. So the Malays were very unhappy. And the non-Malays understood that as long as the Malays remain unhappy, uh, then the non-Malays also face the danger of an uprising, like what happened during 13 May 1969. The only way to make this country safe is to allow the Malays to catch up and own some of the wealth of the country. That was in 19, uh, agreed in 1970, launched in 1971, but by 1990, the target was that the Malays uh, would have roughly 30% of the economic pie, the Malays had only 3%, far short of the 30%. So it was decided the new economic policy cannot end in 1990. It has to be extended. How many more years? Indefinitely. So from 1990 until now, 24 years, yeah, uh, sorry, 1990, 2000, 24, 34 years, we have had a never-ending Malay policy. No more 20 years, no more 50 years. It was ongoing. So now the non-Malays are being told to accept that in perpetuity, forever and ever, there's going to be a economic policy or Malay-based policy to allow the Malays to catch up. But the policy has not changed. We're still doing the same old thing. So if 60 years later, the Malays still cannot catch up, what's going to guarantee that another 60 years from now, the Malays will be able to catch up? If you cannot catch up in 60 years, that means you're never going to be able to catch up forever and ever. So this is where we have created uh, an apartheid system. This is according to the non-Malays. They see this as an apartheid system. One race got special treatment, another race 
does not get special treatment. And then we talk about perpaduan, racial harmony. We talk about unity government. We talk about all the races coming together as brothers and sisters, working together, okay, for the sake of the country, for the future of the country. But at the same time, we don't give equal treatment to the non-Malays. We have the Bumi Putra who got special treatment, the non-Bumi Putra who do not get special treatment. So how do you uh, reconcile this? We are all brothers and sisters. Uh, kita, uh, kita rakyat Malaysia. We are all one bangsa, bangsa Malaysia. But at the same time, Malays have a special place in the country which the non-Malays don't have. The government has to decide. Are we going to be a multiracial country or are we going to be a country where the Malays are given preferential treatment? So this is where the unhappiness of the non-Malays are beginning to be expressed. The non-Malays are beginning now to feel disillusioned with the Pakatan Harapan government. Before this, the non-Malays were very gung-ho of the Pakatan Harapan government. A government now where meritocracy uh, will rule the day. A government where it doesn't mean, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, you are anak Melayu, anak Iban, anak Kadazan, anak India, anak China. You are all my anak. But now, we are saying no. Anak Melayu is the, the favorite anak. Anak bukan Melayu are not the favorite anak. And this is going to create a problem for the government, especially for Anwar Ibrahim, the Prime Minister, when people see his policies or rather the government's policies as being inconsistent with what he is trying to tell the non-Malays. Now, the Pakatan government survives with the support of the non-Malays. If the Pakatan government has to be in office with the support of the Malays, he's going to be out. Kemaman recently, as one example, 70% of the Malays voted for the opposition, only 30% for the government. And even then, Pakatan does not have the direct vote of the Malays. He has the indirect vote of the Malays through his proxy, AMNO. If AMNO collapses, there goes the Malay vote. So Anwar and Pakatan Harapan will need to stay in power with the non-Malay vote. And that's not going to happen if the Malays abandon Pakatan, or in this case, abandon AMNO and AMNO collapses, Pakatan will collapse. So, the government, ANWA, has to look at one policy that can, you know, satisfy not only the Malays, but the non-Malays. Okay, looking at ANWA's recent speech uh, after the Congress Economy Bumi Putra, I can see that in the speech, Anwar is trying to play to both sides. Anwar is trying to satisfy the Malay side of the divide as well as the non-Malay side of the divide. So what Anwar said in his speech uh, does, not, does not sound logical or consistent because he's trying to say something to make both the Malays and non-Malays happy. Cannot be done. If you come up with a speech or you announce a policy that's going to make both Israel and Palestine equally happy, it's not going to happen. You either got to make Israel happy or you make Palestine happy. You cannot make both sides happy at the same time. And this is a situation as far as a, a Bumi Putra policy or new economic policy is concerned. You are trying to come up with a policy. In your speech recently, you announced the aspirations of the government but those aspirations does not make sense. You cannot be both the chicken and the fox. You are either the chicken or you are the fox. So this is where Anwar may need expert help. And uh, first of all, what they need to do is they got to discard the new economic policy totally. Okay, scrap it. And then start from fresh. Start back from the drawing board, come up with a new policy. And this new policy would be how do you help bring the Malays, the economic status of the Malays, up to a higher level than now. 
Okay, some of the economic policies, uh, you know, the new economic policy, not all were failures. For instance, the new economic policy succeeded in giving education to the Malays. Five million Malays had a higher or tertiary education or college education, which in the past, uh, the future of the Malays would be to remain in the kampung as farmers, fishermen, uh, you know, land settlers. But in the past, the Malays did not face the problems they face today. So you have educated the Malays. Five million Malays have been given a higher education. And all these Malays no longer live in the kampung. They no longer plant paddy. They no longer go to, you know, catch fish or go to estates to, you know, I know, plant palm oil or rubber. They now live in the towns. But the Malays in the towns are poor. In the past, the Malays live in the kampung. But in the kampung, the Malays did not starve. They caught their own fish. They planted their own paddy behind their house. They planted their own vegetables. They raised their own chickens. Some even raised goats and cows. Malays did not starve. The Malays were not rich, but the Malays did not starve. Today, the educated Malays who now uh, work with either factories or companies or with the government, they live in the towns, but they're poor. And this happened back in Europe during the Industrial Revolution. During the Industrial Revolution, there was a mass migration of people from the kampung into the big towns and cities. And what happened in the end? The, the, those uh, rakyat who, who moved from the kampung to the cities became poor. Slums were created. So actually, you know, before the Industrial Revolution, the people were better off in the kampung than in the town. So this is beginning to happen now to the Malays. We have poor Malays living in the cities, whereas if they had remained in the kampung because they were not educated, they will probably be able to eat without any problem like in the past. So it's not all good news. Even the good news about Malays being well educated under the new economic policy is also bad news. So now the problem is, going by Anwar's speech recently, going by what was discussed during the Bumi Putra Economic Convention, what's the plan? What's the blueprint? Do you have a master plan? on how to solve the economic problems of the Malays. In 1970, it was targeted the Malays who own 30% of the economic cake. By the end of the new economic policy, it was only 3%. Today, it's even worse. Bankruptcy is higher. So the Malays are moving backwards, not forward. So what are you going to do? Continue? with the same policy of the 1970, go on and on and on, and hoping that maybe this time is going to work, it's not going to work. Don't forget, in the past, Malaysia was booming. Malaysia did not face a serious uh, crisis. Today, the ringgit is weak. Foreign investors are not coming in. Because in those days, we didn't have Laos, Cambodia, Myanmar, Vietnam competing. They were at war. They were having war and no investors wanted to go to those countries. Today, the investors are going to those countries, no longer coming to Malaysia. So we are being hit from all sides, from the you know, value of the ringgit to the you know, FDI falling and many other things. So under this crisis, uh, economic crisis, you want to now help the Malays, bring the Malays up. How are you going to do it? You have to have a crisis plan. You have to have a war plan. Not the same old plan from 1970, go on and on and on, which has proven already to have failed. So the new economic policy or the Bumi Putra economic policy has failed. And uh, there is no longer any future with that old plan. The government has to decide what's going to be the new plan, the new action plan on what to do. All I can see is the government is trying to do more of the same thing and not new things. 
And 10 years from now, we are going to find that the Malays have still not caught up. The Malays are still backward because the government has no idea how to solve the problem of the Malays. Maybe it's time the government brought in the experts, the economic experts and the planners for them to sit down and plan a new policy. A new policy which is not going to be rob Peter to pay Paul. Currently, the policy is rob Peter to pay Paul. So to make Peter, uh, to make Paul rich, you have to take it from Peter. No, you have to have a policy where both Peter and Paul move forward at the same time. A policy where you do not punish one race so that the other race can prosper. Now, the way the Chinese or non-Malays are seeing it, they are being punished because of the failures of the Malays. The more the Malays fail, the more the non-Malays are being punished. Because the Malays have failed, you are trying to make us pay for the failure of the Malays. So we, the non-Malays, have to sacrifice for the sake of the Malays. No. No one should be made to sacrifice for the failure of another race. You help the Malays to improve the economic status of the Malays without robbing the non-Malays. This is what the new policy has to be. So, uh, yep, I don't envy Anwar becoming the Prime Minister. He has a very difficult job ahead of him. And this job is going to be made even more difficult because the uh, global economic uh, you know, uh, situation is not positive. And you have to now try to do your job while the whole world is facing an economic crisis. And that is going to be the biggest challenge for Anwar Ibrahim. But this thing about new economic policy, Bumi Putra economic policy, it needs to be dismantled. It needs to be reviewed. An entirely new one needs to be drawn up.